Welcome back to General History Talks. I am General History, and today we'll be looking at American tank destroyer, the M36. Officially, it was known as the M36 90mm gun motor carriage. The M36 combined the hull of the M10 tank destroyer and a reliable chassis and drivetrain from the M4 Sherman. Combine this with sloped armor and a new turret mounting the 90mm gun M3, and you got yourself a fantastic tank destroyer. U.S. Army doctrines regarding the use of armored vehicles differed greatly from other countries. GHQ tank battalions would support infantry in destroying fixed defenses, while the armored divisions were specifically used to break through the enemy lines and attack the vulnerable rear. U.S. tanks were expected to fight any enemy tanks they encountered, but a new branch was assigned to destroying massed enemy armored trusts, namely the tank destroyer force. This force was meant to counter German Blitzkrieg tactics and were usually held in reserve at the corps or army level. They were to move quickly when an enemy breakthrough occurred, maneuvering aggressively and using ambush tactics to destroy the enemy force. Charging or chasing the enemy tanks was strictly forbidden. This led to the US Army requesting very fast, well-armed machines. Although the vehicles were equipped with turrets, which was unlike most self-propelled anti-tank guns of the time, the American design was more heavily gunned, but lightly armored. This meant that they remained more maneuverable than a contemporary tank, and the idea was to use speed and agility as a defense, compared to thick armor, and to bring a powerful self-propelled gun into action. The standard US tank destroyer, the M10, was rapidly becoming obsolete. This was mainly because of its armament. The 3 inch gun M7 was insufficient against the frontal armor of the new heavy German tanks, such as the Panther and Tiger tanks, outside of dangerously close ranges. This was, however, foreseen, and in late 1942, American engineers had already begun analyzing the potential of a new tank destroyer with a 90mm gun. This study resulted in a prototype vehicle the 90mm gun motor carriage T-53, which mounted the 90mm gun in an open mounting at the rear of an M4 Sherman chassis. The US Army agreed to immediately produce 500 vehicles in August 1942, with 3,500 more later. Arguing that the design of the T-53 was too rushed, the tank destroyer force objected. The 90mm gun motor carriage T-53 E1 proved even worse, so the contract was cancelled. The Ordnance Department tested mounting the experimental 90mm gun T7 into the turret of an M10 tank destroyer in October 1942. General Andrew Bruce, head of the tank destroyer force, was against the project because he favored the M18 Hellcat, but he was ignored. Although the mounting of the 90mm gun was straightforward, it proved too heavy for the M10's turret, so a new turret had to be designed with a massive counterweight at the back and incorporate a power traverse. The first two prototypes, designated 90mm gun motor carriage T-71, were completed in September 1943. A request for the full production of the 90mm gu guns was initially denied, since they were already being studied for the use on tanks, but Army ground forces approved of the project in October 1943. Initially, a ring mount was used on the left side with the turret, for the 50 caliber Browning M2 HB anti-aircraft machine gun, but this was changed to a pintle mount at the rear of the turret. A decision was made to use the chassis of the M10A1 tank destroyer, since significant amounts of the M10A1s were available, and it was determined that it had the superior automotive characteristics. After testing, an initial order for 300 vehicles was issued, and the T-71 was designated upon standardization on June 1, 1944, as the 90mm gun motor carriage M M36. Although the hulls were fitted with applique armor buses, they were removed after July 1943, since the armor kits were never manufactured. Because of this, some M36s had the buses still on the hull, while most did not. At first, the M36 had the 3 inch gun stirrup travel lock, which was unsuitable for the 90mm gun, so a lot of crews improvised travel locks taken from other tanks. Due to the massive muzzle blast of the 90mm gun, the visibility for the crew was severely hampered after firing, and this led to the manufacturing and installation of a double baffle muzzle brake, beginning in early November 1944. 
A proper folding travel lock suited for the 90mm gun was added to the rear hull around the same time. The gun was also modified with a more powerful elevating mechanism and a better equilibrator. According to the initial contract, General Motors Fisher tank arsenal produced the last 310 A1 tank destroyers in January 1944, without the turrets needed to be converted into M36s. The contract was later increased to 500 vehicles, which was again increased to 600 in May 1944. In July, merely two months later, this was increased to a staggering 1400 vehicles. Due to the problems the M10s faced when fighting against German tanks like the Panther and especially the Tiger in the Normandy campaign. This caused problems for the training units, as only 913 of the 1413 M10 A1s have been completed. Due to this lack of hulls, it was decided to finish the initial production run by mounting M36 turrets onto M4 A3 Sherman hulls. A production run of 187 90mm gun motor carriage M36 B1s ran from October to December 1944. From June to December 1944, Macy Harris con co converted another 500 M10 A1s into M36s, while the American Locomotive Company converted 413 of the same hulls into M36s from October to December of the same year. Although the Army reduced the number of vehicles for 1944 from 1413 to 1342, 350 more conversions were scheduled for 1945, and this number was increased to 584. The final batch of 210 A1s was converted by the Montreal Locomotive Works in May 1945. The supply of M10 A1s eventually ran out, and therefore it was decided in January 1945 to use M10 hulls for further conversions. American Locomotive Company converted 672 M10s in May 1945, while the Montreal Locomotive Works finished the conversion of 52 hulls in May 1945, and these were called the 90mm gun motor carriage M36B. The American tank destroyer doctrine emphasized speed and gun power over armor. But the M10s and M36s were designed on a tank chassis and not purpose-built tank destroyer designs. General Andrew Bruce criticized these vehicles for being too slow. Apart from the turret, the armor configuration of the M36 was identical to the M10A1, which ranged in thickness from 9mm to 127mm thick. The turret of the M36, like the M10A1, was open-topped, mounting the large 90mm gun M3. The M36 carried 47 rounds of 90mm ammunition, 11 of which were stowed in the hollow counterweight, while the other 36 were stowed in the sponsons. The 90mm gun M3 could fire 5 times of ammunition. The M77 APT armor piercing tracer was a standard armor piercing round with a tracer in the back of the shell to observe the fall of shot of ranges. The T33 APCT or armor piercing capped tracer was a normal substitute for the M77 round which was heat treated to improve hardness and had a ballistic windshield to improve drag characteristics. The M82 APC slash HET or armor piercing capped high explosive tracer was the main round used for engaging enemy tanks. Its, lo its large high explosive filler was used to damage the insides of vehicles after penetration. This shot was able to penetrate 129 millimeters of armor at a 30 degree angle from 500 feet or 457 meters and 122 millimeters of armor at 914 meters. The M71HE or high explosive round was used for indirect fire or when engaging enemy infantry, anti-tank guns, light vehicles or other soft targets. Lastly we have the T30E16HVAPT high velocity armor piercing tracer. This high-velocity round was capable of penetrating 221 millimeters of angled armor at 30 degrees at 
457 meters or 199 millimeters of armor at 914 meters. This armor had difficulty with the sloped glacis plate of the German Panther tank and a T-33 AP round was developed for that purpose. The T-30 and T-33 rounds were only issued in small numbers near the end of World War II. As secondary armament, the M36 tank destroyers had a single 50 caliber Browning M2 HB machine gun for anti-aircraft or anti-personnel use, with a thousand rounds of ammo. This weapon was situated to the rear of the turrets, and crews often opted to mount the pintel to the front, for easier engagement of infantry. Another option would be to mount a 30 caliber Browning M1919 A4 machine gun while retaining the 50 caliber at the rear. The M36B1s retained the 30 caliber machine gun in the bow of the vehicles with 2,000 rounds of ammunition, and the crews of all types of M36s had their personal weapons in the hull or turret for self-defense. In September 1944, the first 40 M36s made it overseas and entered combat in October of the same year. The 1st and 9th US armies used M36s to re-equip tank destroyed battalions attached to armored divisions. The 703rd Tank Destroy Battalion began re-equipping on September 30th, 1944, and the 3rd US Army used the M36s to re-equip towed battalions, which mainly used field anti-tank guns for a more defensive role. The M36 was well liked by its crews, being one of the few armored fighting vehicles in the US forces who could destroy heavy German tanks from a distance. Corporal Anthony Pinot of the 1st Platoon Alpha Company 814 Tank Destroy Battalion knocked out a Panther at 4,200 yards, while another gunner, Lieutenant Alfred Rose from the same company, scored a kill against a Panther at 4,600 yards, which was the maximum range of the telescopic sight. Although this was not common, since the slope glazes plate of the Panther could deflect certain shots from a mere 150 yards away with the same 90mm gun. And the front of the Tiger II could only be penetrated at certain hard-to-hit places. By the end of 1944, seven tank destroyed battalions were converted to the M36, and the M36 replaced most of the M10s by the end of the war. The M36 was used again in the Korean War, when it could destroy any Soviet-made armored fighting vehicle deployed in that theater of, of operations. One post-war modification was the addition of a ball-mounted machine gun on the co-driver's side, just like many other armored fighting vehicles of that time. During the Korean War, M36s became one of the preferred armored fighting vehicles for the military assistance program transfers, since there was a shortage of M26 and M46 tanks. South Korean tank battalions were provided with 110 M36s and a small number of M10 tank destroyers during the war. The Republic of China's army required eight former French M36s in 1955, and they were stationed on the Kinmen Island group, due to them being more maneuverable compared to the bigger M48A3 and later CM11-12 main battle tanks but being more powerful than M24 and M41 light tanks. Surprisingly, and pretty amazingly, at least two still remained in service with troops in the Liu Township, as of April 2001, 57 years after being introduced to service. Sadly, I couldn't find any good history based on eyewitness accounts for this video, but I still hope you enjoyed this general history episode. If you did, please click the like button, share this with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Also, leave a comment down below. If you want, you can also leave a ship, tank or historic vehicle in your comment and I might do a video about that subject in the foreseeable future. Until next time and take care.